So we'll start the session, uh, which is the session on uh, digital government for seamless public service delivery. Uh, I am the moderator for uh, this session. Um, I am Arjun Herat, a partner at Ernst & Young. We are looking after technology consulting in addition uh, to looking after overall consulting at Ernst & Young. Uh, we have a very eminent panel uh, today uh, with us. Um, we have uh, Mr. Tushar Suravira, who is the additional secretary from the Ministry of Justice. We also have uh, Mr. Kanchana uh, Tudugala, uh, who is the chief digital government officer uh, and is also, he's also representing ICTA today. Uh, we also have uh, Mr. Kampi Koshi, uh, who is one of our senior partners at Ernst Young India, uh, who is involved in digital transformation and um, is, 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 uh, is an expert in this area of digital government for seamless public service delivery. So thank you very much uh, for the panel uh, uh, to join, uh, for joining this uh, session today. Uh, I must say that we have a, a very hard time, uh, sort of hard stop at 12 noon uh, Sri Lanka time. Uh, so hence we will actually try to run this very efficiently. Uh, just to uh, set the context uh, for today's session, uh, in this session, uh, we are trying to explore a, a roadmap for Sri Lanka in relation to digitalization of public sector organizations across government to bis uh, across government uh, and government to business, a uh, government to citizen and civic tech and civic tech platforms as this is a key element of any country's digitalization program to provide seamless public service delivery. Uh, we saw a, a very good effort being made during our, over the last um, year amidst COVID uh, to get to digital service delivery and interactions with citizens across few areas of government from healthcare, social service to education and justice. Uh, An EY survey uh, done uh, recently reveals that the majority of people uh, anticipating making more use of technology in their daily lives than if the pandemic had not happened. Uh, and clearly, uh, this, is a, this is an opportunity for to bring about transformation. But also it showed and it shows that the government is still uh, have a long way to go uh, in their digital journey to meet citizens' expectations for better service delivery. With hindsight, uh, we see very clearly that embedding new technologies and working practices for long term to achieve a desired status in respect of this will require concerted actions from three different groups, the center of government, the individual government agencies, and also the local government agencies, and also the wider societal ecosystem also will need to uh, ramp up uh, their efforts in this regard. So in this context, uh, my first question to the panel, uh, which I want to direct to uh, Koshi, uh, um, which is, um, you know, Koshi, what, is, what would be the critical considerations and key actions uh, that could help governments to frame their digital future is my question, uh, which will set the scene for our discussion to follow. Over to you, Koshi. Thank you, Arjuna, and good, uh, good morning, good afternoon to you all. Um, uh, as an introduction, I would like to just throw a one single theme, Arjuna, for the, you know, the, the problem statement that you gave. It is about how is uh, government going to drive significant adoption of uh, uh, digital technologies in service delivery. You know, from uh, my experience in India, as well as in many other countries, uh, I've been working in this area for quite some time. I'd like to throw one theme, the theme of digital infrastructure as a public good, what we call a societal platform, okay? Just uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the digital good as a public, uh, digital infra as a public good has a humongous potential to change. Let's take two quick examples. Remember internet was up and running 40 years ago. What really made it as ubiquitous and a platform for anybody on the road or anybody on the corporate uh, uh, boardroom to use it is the HTTP, developed by Tim Lee and made it as a public good. Look at GPS. It was an um, initiative by the Reagan on for a warfare. In uh, early 2000, Clinton made it available for commercial use with the same level of accuracy. Airbnb, Ola, everything came with that. So when we, uh, if I draw an experience from your neighborhood, which is my country in India, 
you know, what I wanted to say was when we tried to set up a digital ID in India, you know, all over the digital ID was not a new thing. It was there in many countries for many years, but we wanted to look at it slightly differently. We said, it's not just about giving an ID, but it's about making the ID a platform for digital service delivery to improve the quality and the efficiency of the existing services, as well as bring out completely new, um, you know, the services without, uh, which they made possible only with the digital ID as a platform, not as a mechanism to issue an ID. And because we build it as an ID as a platform, it made humongous change. If I just give you two examples, one is the financial inclusion or banking sector participation. One of the biggest challenge in many of the financial services is KYC, we all know. KYC is know your client. The mechanism to establish who you are and what's your uh, credentials. It used to cost four to five dollars for anybody to open an account or even to you know, enter the mutual fund. But the idea as a platform made eKYC possible, which is going to cost maybe $10 cents. We saw the banking sector participation going from 17 to 18 percent to 80 to 20 percent in a matter of few years' time. You know, which was made possible only because of this platform approach. The next line that we tried to do was to uh, bring the idea of uh, e-sign again. It is what we call the layered innovation, making common service element available as a public good for everybody to use. You know. E-Sign made digital signature possible for any kinds of services as a one-time activity at the cost of 10 to 15 dollar cents. Okay. Whereas in the other case, the digital signature, getting a dongle, signing a thing, etc., was a very painful thing as only the corporate board could think about or CFOs could think about. Now it has become eminently possible. So this is not just in the financial sector on the ID based one. You know, we had been looking at this as an idea across sectors. I gave you example of, um, uh, you know, banking inclusion. I can give the examples of how we brought that a similar thing in financial uh, transactions. You know, earlier when the financial transaction was the wall gardens of a few credit card companies, the number of transactions that could happen in a month was only 300 million after 60 years of being there in India. But when we introduced the UPI as a digital good, as a public platform, it just took off in a matter of four years. It does something like two and a half billion transaction a month. And this idea of a societal platform, the, the, the word I'm using is societal platform and since digital infrastructure as a, as, a, as a public good, but that doesn't mean that government is going to take over everything. Government is giving some foundational thing on which uh, innovations can come. Even when the UPI platform is made available, it is given the possibility of every bank in the country to come out, come out with their own innovation. And the similar kind of thing, thinking is being brought into, the layered innovation is being brought into health, into education, uh, into retail, and so on and so forth, where there is a certain building block, like a Lego block being made available by the government and leaving it for the private sector to build on this with a variety of services relevant for the, 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 the citizen and the consumer at large. And that is one idea, Arjun, I just want to throw with my international experience, and I'm sure that uh, you guys can uh, look at what is contextually relevant for Sri Lanka and have a meaningful discussion in the coming half an hour. Thank you. Arjuna, you're on mute. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Koji. Thank you very much for that uh, useful thoughts and opening remarks. Um, you know, I think the message was uh, very loud and clear. Uh, having digital platforms as uh, as public good, uh, uh, one foundation and platform that can actually bring about transparency and also uh, sort of uh, inclusiveness uh, in in uh, public services um, across the citizens. My second question, based building on this, uh, to build on this, my second question is to Kanchana. Uh, Kanchana. Um, uh, will you be able to shed some light on possible uh, on the possible roadmap uh, that the government uh, may have in relation to what Koshi mentioned? You know, creating a foundation, a platform, uh, building across uh, a societal platform, uh, which will actually be able to uh, roll out 
uh, seamless public service. Uh, and then my question to you is, uh, the, uh, you know, as ICTA and as government, I'm sure there is a roadmap. I have heard about it. Would you like to elaborate on that and shed some light around uh, what Koshi was alluding to? Thank you. Yes, uh, most certainly. Uh, so hi, Arjun. Thank you for introducing me. Uh, yes, I mean, this is one of the um, fundamental requirements government had, I mean, not not only now, in more than you know, 10, 15 years before. I think government has, uh, at that time, even like somewhere around 2002, if I remember correctly, started a similar initiative. But uh, for the last 18 years, uh, due to various reasons, um, that um, unfortunately we have not been able to get a, a, a solution off the ground. But luckily, uh, where we are now, the current state, uh, all the uh, prerequisite activities have been carried out with the uh, in consultation of uh, respective government organizations and the policy directions coming from our ministry and the government. So we have been able to take the initial steps towards implementing a, a, a ID solution, a foundational ID solution framework as um, similar to what uh, Koshi ex explained about. Uh, now, uh, if I to just elaborate on, uh, you know, what are the steps that we have taken already? I mean, a project of this nature, we need to look at multiple aspects. It's not a simply implementing a software solution. So whether it may be uh, legal uh, aspects, uh, changes to law regulations, or whether it may be, you know, about the data protection um, or, or even uh, uh, ground level implementation. What kind of a software solution are we going to implement? How are we going to implement? And then uh, uh, how are we going to enroll the citizens? As you know, uh, the ID card office or the Department of Registration office has got the approval to re-register re -register the citizen population. Uh, so how are we going to get back, you know, go ahead and do that? What is the time frame? So we have looked at all the aspects and um, I mean, even some of you must be aware that we have already initiated some of the key procurements uh, in this regard. So our idea is to uh, implement this uh, foundational ID solution uh, this year so that we could uh, start the work, um, uh, commence the re-registration process and, and, and go to a level where we could offer the services. And then when it comes to offer the services, offering services, um, having implemented the core ID solution, our focus will be mainly on uh, identity authentication as a service. Koshi spoke about KYC, so eKYC, and up to uh, digital signatures. So with that, with that first round of services being made available, that is it, it is at that point we will go for um, different use cases and open up to the private sector so that they can make use of uh, the services being available made available through this infrastructure so uh, for private sector for example we have identified number of use cases which we think will make ha will have that impact um, uh, having such a solution uh, and for private sector we are offering we are trying to offer a, a couple of common services and they of course have the fa facility to um, um, consume the ekyc as a service so, so the plans have been drawn and we are in the middle of implementing it. So I'm fairly confident that the, the, the dream of giving a, a digital presence to citizens of this country is now being realized. And, and I'm fairly happy that, you know, ICTA um, would, will be, is able to partner with the government organizations in this journey. So what Koshi spoke of, we are very much um, on our path to achieving it this year. Super. Uh, that's great, uh, Kanchana, and uh, very encouraging. And uh, we look forward to that uh, a scenario of a foundational platform coming to being and uh, EKYC e being possible to, and also having applications on top of this foundational platform, will I'm sure is going to uh, provide a lot of opportunities uh, for uh, businesses as well as government as well as citizens. So thank you. Actually, we have questions that are trickling in. 
uh one of the questions i thought uh, kanchana with i can quickly ask you uh, uh, and i'm not quite sure whether the clarity on this is good enough if not we can really ask to the person who sent it to also shed some clarity on this the question is goes like this uh, this is to kanchana is there any plans to implement did on decentralized platform like blockchain um we have thought about it and um, let me say that we are we are in the process of finalizing the architecture and uh, you know to to get the final approval to go ahead and implement so uh, that is something of course that we have looked into uh, but nothing is finalized in, the, in that regard okay great thanks thanks kanchana uh, my sort of follow up question to uh, tushara uh, is um, you know tushara is the addition secretary to the ministry of justice at this current juncture uh, tushara has been in the forefront of technology transformation and digitalization of government agencies in, is initially as a senior officer at icta and thereafter at the department of uh, motor registrations or motor vehicle registrations uh, and um, and now plays a, a transformation role at the ministry of justice and technology is is uh, really bed and brother uh, tushara you know, what do you see as uh, critical actions and considerations in respect of technology transformation and digitalization of government agencies in the context of what we have been talking about a seamless uh, public service uh, over to you tushara uh thanks arshina i think uh, when you uh, consider uh, the structure of the government uh the the justice sector is one of the main pillars uh no now now it caters to many stakeholders of the sector uh so therefore we have seen over the years uh, our sector has been a bit backward in terms of embracing technology uh because of the nature the the quite nature of the the sector is too big of course the government is big uh but the justice sector is it's also very big so it's if you want to introduce it information communication technology uh, into the system justice sector so you have to be very thoughtful very mindful so uh, uh, as you also might know i mean uh, we did a comprehensive study for this sector in 2017 but we couldn't move on because uh, no uh, when you look at the holistic view it's it's really big so so uh, so obviously for the ict agency because we need uh, somebody uh, a technological agency who would be behind us who would support us so um, after all these you no know, uh, kind of delays so uh, what i see the important uh, turn turning point for this project to be active again is the leadership um, i mean uh, everybody in the government knows uh, the j satyanara and the famous indian author in e government he says uh, how valuable uh, is the leadership is so he he says uh, all the people the policies technology processes infrastructure uh, even the financing uh, all are zeros what gives the value addition to these zeros the one in front of all these zeros is the leadership and the vision so i think we have got that leadership now because it's is from the leadership uh, be it political or be it administrative that we should have that uh, you no know, feeling of okay then now we are going ahead so i think we have got it now so so we are geared towards uh, uh, automating or transforming our sector into the digital arena uh, so we have planned it properly uh, we have done a, a quite a comprehensive study i think uh, i think eny was lucky to work with us i mean uh, on that journey but uh, no it uh, took quite some to you know uh, get into the next step so now we have uh, kind of phased it out uh, we are looking on a pilot basis then a kind of a uh, rolling out for a smaller segment and then rolling out for the country so we are very 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 uh, kind of uh, ho hoping that you no know, it will work out properly uh, so uh, with all the support from uh, the government top leadership with all the ingredients the icta is bringing at bringing into the plates and the support from the private sector like you uh, and the commitment from my own agency and the sector uh, including the minister or minister um we are very hopeful that we will be able to uh, do do a better 
uh, transformation in, in our justice sector. Yes, thanks, Tushar. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we will come up uh, again, you know, follow up if we do have some time to just talk about the practical aspects of your rollouts. Uh, we'll revert back to you on that subsequently uh, today, uh, very soon if we do have time. But I, I do have a follow up question to uh, Koshi. Uh, Koshi, when you hear of Sri Lankan plans, uh, what, you know, from Kanchana and Tushar, uh, a question that sort of lingers in my mind and possibly in a lot of the audience's mind. Uh, is that, um, you know, uh, whether there is a need to break down silos uh, uh, that may emerge uh, as, as we go about digitization in government agencies uh, and achieve interoperability uh, of different systems. Uh, of course, you talk, talked about a foundational platform, but the applications uh, needs to get, uh, you know, looked, hooked on to uh, this foundational platform. Uh, and also the, you know, so there are, you know, interoperability of different systems, databases uh, and registers uh, uh, to provide a one-stop shop access to public service is possibly the vision that uh, someone would want to get to. Uh, this would mean a common IT platforms uh, should be configured to slot into, into the services of any agency, uh, providing a range of applications and services such as identity management, payments, messaging and notification and so on and so forth. Um, you know, and also government must also create the means for citizens to access services through secure digital user identification and authentication systems, which in fact, Kanchan spoke about, uh, is already, journey has already started. Uh, so my question to you, Koshe, is, um, you know, how do we really integrate all this stuff that's happening all around, uh, link it up to the foundational platform and, you know, how do we get to making that big impact uh, that possibly everyone is looking for? Over to you, Koshe. Hi, uh, Arjuna, thanks. I think it's a very valid point that you raised. In fact, that is something that is even, uh, you know, in the minds of all the big policy makers, especially in the digital area that we are having in India. So like I said, take just take an example from the ID side. So we said when the ID platform is one, what we have done is we have declared a set of open APIs. Okay, so it is not a closed API. It's an open API published and made available for any authorized users to integrate. And that the whole approach of the, the government specifying the broader architecture and the open APIs for multiple entities to seamlessly talk to each other is one of the foundational contribution that uh, you know you should do as the government. Otherwise, what you said is a very very uh, you know very 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 true that there could be silos getting built. Second thing is that whichever one as I told about. Uh, you know, it is not that government is going to create a monolith as a platform or we are expecting a private sector to come and create a completely walled garden of a monolith of a platform. But it is, they are creating, a, you know, you're creating the specifications and the architectural principles uh, of uh, integrating using open API. That is one dimension. Second thing is also government uh, encouraging what you said about the digital registries being built, common registers being built up which is also available for any user, any authorized user to connect with using a common API, an open API. So the idea is uh, about uh, prescribing the open API for uh, uh, transactions to be uh, interoperable between the various sectors and that becoming uh, a, a guidelines being prepared uh, for the you know, the various um, sectors. If I just give a, again, since I'm coming from India and uh, I'm your neighbor, I thought I'll give you one or two examples where we tried. For example, in the health sector, we created something called National Digital Health Blueprint. That doesn't mean that government is going to set up the whole infrastructure. It says, what should be the way the registry of the doctors to be maintained? What is the way the registry of the hospitals to be maintained? What is the way in which the laboratories to be maintained? And each of the state, and India being such a large country with each state having its federal structure, they may all have their own ways of holding. But what it says, these are the common fields, this is the API to be declared, this is how this founding, the building blocks should talk to each other. Similar way, we have just uh, published what we call national digital education architecture, same way, which will enable, you know, our 36 countries, um, and so, so states have different way of uh, even educating different boards. But they, none of them are becoming a unified one. It is becoming a, it, none of them are becoming uniform, but a unified infrastructure where the common elements can be shared 
APIs will enable interoperability with a complete flexibility of each of the divisions to having developing the way they, uh, you know, what is suitable for them. It could be the language, it could be the structure, it could be the syllabus, it could be anything. But they, uh, the, the specification very clearly provide for interoperability. And that is, I think, um, Tushara also has alluded to, I think these are the kind of role as a ministry and the, 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 the uh, IT department uh, will, uh, you know, will make it possible. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Voshi. Thanks. Very useful um, sort of uh, thoughts around, uh, you know, how, how to bring about this interoperability. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we do have questions coming in. Uh, we have two questions. I believe both these questions uh, possibly may need to get answered by uh, Kanchana. Uh, Kanchana, and in addition to, you know, uh, let me see whether I can, all your, I myself have a question, but let me post these two questions first. Uh, has digital, the first question that has come from the audience, has digital government roadmap been published anywhere that we can refer to is, is the first question that I have for you. And the second question, is there any plan or start any plan uh, to start the issuing of digital identity card for all citizens in the country? Has it been finalized or under discussion? Right, so uh, I will answer for the second question first. Yes, all the discussions has been carried out. It has been finalized. So we are in the process of uh, implementing the solution so that we can start issuing the digital identities early next year. So that's the plan. And then when it comes to the uh, uh, digital government framework, um, that's already been published at the ICT website. So, um, so anybody can come and have a look at it. And we are in the process of embarking uh, multiple initiatives, which is also in line with the um, Sri Lanka unique digital identity, so that we could uh, give the dividends of implementing such a solution to the um, country, public and private sector um, in no time. So that will be my second answer to this first question. Arjun, I think you are mute. Yes, thank you very much. This is, this is something common that happens to all of us. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks. Uh, so, Kanjana, just a, a follow up question um, you know, to some of the things that were alluded by Koshi and uh, Tushara uh, quickly. Uh, this is about, you know, do, do you, you know, so I think you already started the journey of creating a foundation or platform, uh, is what clearly came out. And uh, you have also, you know, finalized arrangements uh, in response to your the two questions that we had. You also said, uh, you know, what had got done to issue digital ID to what not. Uh, do you have any plans to what would be the initial services that possibly will get rolled out uh, on top of this uh, platform that may come? Do you, is there any kind of planning or thinking of, you know, the idea is that, you know, you also like to have quick wins as government um, to ensure the impact is felt uh, by the citizen. Um, is there any kind of thinking and planning as to what those initial uh, services and um, applications might be uh, on this foundation or platform? Right. Um, so I think I would. I think the answer would be on twofold. Um, so uh, initially, let me uh, in a couple of minutes touch upon uh, some of the initiatives that we are we have embarked uh, as part of the digital government architecture or digital government framework, uh, which has been approved by the government. So um, we have looked at in, in, in different aspects, uh, foundation layer. How are we going to make sure, even if you're going to implement these solutions, uh, how to make sure the foundation layer is in place. Here we are talking about a government network, which we have already implemented and in the process of expanding in big time. And then a cloud infrastructure. As you may know, Arjuna, may, we have already implemented two zones, uh, cloud infrastructure, and we are going to implement the third zone this year. So the digital identity, SLUDI, will be the centerpiece which will sit on top of that and will make use of the national data exchange, which we are again going to implement, commence implementation this year, which will allow um, sharing of information uh, and services across government organizations. So sitting on top of that foundational uh, um, foundation layer, we are we have already identified uh, some of the key some of the key shared solutions which we want to implement. 
from um, uh, from uh, payment platforms to uh, payroll systems to uh, you know um, even things like uh, you know email and collaborative solutions which will leverage that foundational um, layer components uh, in order to uh, offer seamless service to government sector and then we have from there onwards we have again identified some of the key solutions which we need to implement in multiple domains now uh, what sushara spoke of the the government courts e court solution is one of the key solutions that we have embarked and then likewise we, we have identified in education uh, transportation trade what are the solutions that we are going to implement which will um, increase the uh, digital uh, presence um, of citizens uh, and will will facilitate government organization to offer uh, services to uh, citizens they are clients in an efficient manner and while targeting other key initiatives like like, like ease of doing business how to make sure our services are offered much more efficiently than um, in order to for us to uplift the country rankings now the second part of my answer the specific question you ask about what kind of uh, uh, use cases or, or what kind of services that we have planned for um, as we uh, implement the digital id solution and now for that uh, i would like to say that we have looked at it in uh, uh, in multiple aspects now as you all know there are organization as of now government organization taking biometrics let's say department of immigration and immigration you know to go and give a give a, um, a passport obtain a passport you need to give your biometrics so we have identified organizations like immigration Uh, pension department and even department of motor traffic who are in the process of already established some kind of biometric based authentication mechanism to be to be the first use cases because they are already using it all the regulations all the aspects are already in place will be connected offered to citizen as as we roll out the digital identity solution and in addition to that there are a number of potential government organizations from sri lanka customs to national fertilizers secretariat to a department of prisons to ministry of justice related organization inland revenue register of companies so likewise we have identified up to 10 organizations which we think could bring a major impact um, to citizens and even private sector um, through the solution and as the third wave we have identified the social welfare to be a, a key aspect um and then implement solutions in line with that aspect uh, and while we do that we want to implement some common services which um, which the financial sector um, can make use of uh, to carry out that ekyc um, element of it so uh, so we have looked at as i said in multiple aspects and and in parallel we are working on those use cases or sample services as we roll out the Uh, as we establish the sri lanka unique digital identity solution the whole idea is that as we start the uh, re registration start the citizen enrollment process we will have services which the with the with the public private sector can see the value of 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 this um, of this initiative right super uh, thank you very much uh, you know uh, clearly there is a plan uh, and there is uh, clearly a vision and that's fantastic kanchan and i hope you know we have the ability to you know get there as quickly as possible uh, we do have two questions but before i pose these two questions uh, both looks for kanchan because but i will pose uh, I'll, I'll, i'll i'll transform that question one question to koshi but i'll come back after we really uh, sort of have a response from tushara on a on a question that i thought Uh, was very useful uh, for us to hear about uh, have a response uh, you know chishara you, you have a lot of experience working in government agencies uh, and ekta and supporting government agencies and now at government agency level and you know in you know you know all what we spoke about uh, has to be um, yielded or has to be uh, you know applied at a government agency level and uh, you know this whole um, ecosystem that you may need to build at a government agency level to optimize the benefits of a platform and the applications that will get uh, done uh, is is something is very critical uh, so you know anything that you can talk around um, on you know 
how you will look at organizational governance structures at a government agency level, uh, designing um, you know innovation and designing better customer experience, uh, using and leveraging on this technology and adapting a culture and work practice, uh, which in fact will lend very well to optimize the benefits of all what we are talking about. Do you have any kind of uh, sentiments that you can share with us uh, in relation to this whole ecosystem that may need to get created at a government agency level? Yes, Arjuna, uh, true we have, because as I said, now, now our stakeholders are very different. You no, know, we have judges, uh, very senior, and some are very senior citizens. Uh, and we are lawyers of, you no, know, multidiscipline lawyers. So there are old people, there are young people, there are computer savvy, very you know, uh, enthusiastic uh, lawyer community. And then we have the court staff. And then again, we have general public as well. And then we, we, we may need to integrate into like uh, police, department of police, prisons, government and list department, uh, and maybe for department of motor traffic also. So, so we are talking about many, many stakeholders. So, uh, so we are, before the big projects comes in, we are trying to understand and get people ready, all the stakeholders ready for this transformational journey. So, and we have uh, set up a government, governance structure also, uh, kind of, uh, we have weekly meetings, then we have you no know, monthly meetings with uh, kind of many more stakeholders, then we have uh, kind of quarterly or monthly meetings is the very high stakeholders to make sure that you know we, we, we iron out all the issues that we have. So what I what what we have realized by now after you no know, few of the initial meetings that we have uh, with ICT agency uh, with the consultants and also talking to the stakeholders of our own uh, that we need to address these issues in many fronts. Okay, first we need to make sure uh, that uh, we address the change management part of it. Okay, this is a bigger system. Uh, no, people should not feel that no, they are going to be taken away. You no, know, their 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 duties, the jobs, uh, the day-to-day -day activities are not going to be uh, gone, kind of washed away with these new systems. Uh, so we need to make sure, understand them, communicate to them properly, and 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 support them. Of course, during the few discussions that we had, initial discussion, we came to know. Uh, even though we talk about these big systems, uh, sometimes we have neglected the basic facilities that we should be providing to them. Uh, just like, you no, know, very fast internet uh, nowadays is available with all the, you know, service providers. And, 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 and maybe, uh, maybe basic ICT facilities to do day-to-day -day, uh, work. So we, we, are, we are trying to provide them. Uh, Tushar, uh, we have about uh, uh, four minutes. I want to answer these two questions. Maybe in a run, one minute you can wrap up. Then I sure. can get the two questions that the audience is asking answered quickly by the other two. Please, Very over good. to you. Okay. So we are not going to try to make uh, do anything that ICT does. We are working with them. We want them to come and help on architecture, infrastructure matters. And, and, and the leadership we are expecting from the top. And we are working on until the new system comes working on getting ready our stakeholders step by step. So, so that's the plan as of now. So hopefully uh, uh, in the pilot phase, we will be able to you know, uh, look into this uh, more deeply and iron and out whatever the issues that we have. So that's the plan. Fantastic. Thank, thank you very much, Ushara. Very encouraging. Uh, very quickly, uh, within one minute, Kanchan, if you can answer this question, um, which is about, will there be an open API to the digital ID, as Mr. Koshi said, in order to integrate with other public systems? Will it be based upon existing NIC or different? Yes, there will be, as, as Koshi said, uh, we will have all those features in place. It will not be based on the existing because as I said, there will be a, a citizen re-registration, complete re-registration in, in the sense, reissuance of new identity card to every citizen. That will happen. So it will be based on that new identity card, which will be on biometric base. Super, super. Thank you very much, Kanchana. Uh, Koshi, this is the question, but I want you to answer from a, actually this should be answered by Kanchana, but I want to pose it to Koshi to give us best practice. What is the platform which, what is the platform which is made by government to improve innovators? Koshi, no. the question is, what is the, what is the platform? One minute, please. No, no, if you look at that's a very, it, can, it is a very, very deep subject, but the key that is, that is there is, you know, it is, um, you know, there are two ways to look at. One is an organizational encouragement for the, uh, you know, the, the innovators to come. 
Second thing, if I give you a very specific example, let's take the case of health sector, okay? Because innovation has to happen in multiple and you cannot have one platform which will enable all innovators. So what we have done, whether it is in health system or what we are going to do in education or what we are going to do in the, in, in the financial inclusion, is that government has provided, once they declared the basic uh, building blocks and the specification, has established a sandbox, okay? Where innovate, uh, the innovative fintech companies uh, or uh, health tech companies can develop their own solution. Yeah, and see, whether I, I think, yeah, great, it works thank well. you. Thank you. I might have to cut you off here. Sorry about that. You, you, you answered the question, I think, in some elements. But thank you very much. I want to thank the entire panel here. I think it was a very, very interesting discussion. Unfortunately, we didn't have more time. Uh, thank you very much to the panel and thank you to the audience for listening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.